Now let's continue our discussion of definitions and properties of periodic functions. And so let's look at some key properties. So let's look at a cosine function. And this cosine function has a harmonic angular frequency uh, j. It has, it's the jth harmonic angular frequency. And we are going to sum that function over the whole length of our record. So we're summing t sub i for i equals 1 to n. So what does that equal? Let's first consider the case in which j is equal to 0. And uh, so that means that there's no oscillation in the signal. It corresponds to an infinite period signal, if you will. And so the cosine of 0, so omega 0, cosine of 0 is 1. And so if we sum 1 n times, we simply get n. Right? And that was the case where j was equal to 0. And omega 0 is equal to 0. Now, what happens when j is not equal to 0? So there is a full oscillation. So let's look at a case here. So here's, a, here's the fundamental uh, period here, shown going having one oscillation over the full record length. And I've sam the sample interval is shown, or the sampling points are shown by each of these bars. So the cosine function at each of the sample points varies with the length of these bars. And you can see that if you add all the blue bars together, then that will sum to zero. And likewise, if you add all the red bars, that will sum. If you add all the red bars, that will also sum to zero. So the sum, whenever we have any sort of oscillation, as long as we have a complete wavelength, which we do for all of our harmonics, the sum is always going to be zero. And Wessel proves in his notes that uh, if you convert this to an, the sum to an integral, then the, that's equivalent. The integral of the cosine function is equal to zero, or the area under the cosine curve is equal to zero. So when j is not equal to zero, then the solution is zero. Now, uh, I'd like you to make sure you copy this down in your notes. I'm actually re-recording this to correct a mistake that uh, occurred in a previous recording. So in a second, these uh, uh, the yellow writing I have here is going to disappear, and it will continue on with the rest of the video. But I'd like to make sure that you have this written down correctly in your notes. So likewise, if we have a sine function, of some wave number j, that's, that's also going to sum to 0. And if there's no oscillation, that is, if wj is 0, then that's also equal to 0. So the sum of sine wj ti over the whole record is 0 all the time. Now let's consider the sum again over our whole data record of the product of cosine omega j t i times a cosine function with a different angular frequency omega k t i. So it turns out, so let's, let's consider the situation of j is equal to k and, but it's not equal to 0. And if that's true, if, J, if we're looking at the same frequency of oscillation, then what we have is a sum of cosine squared omega kti. And that, using a trig identity, is equal to 1 plus 2 
cosine omega kti over 2. And that gives n over 2 uh, plus the sum of this sums to 0 from the first, uh, first identity or the first equation. So we get n, n over 2 if j is not equal to k and both are not equal to 0. When j, this is true when j is equal to k and both are not equal to 0, right. And so when j is equal to k and they are equal to 0, then the cosine of 0 is 1, and if we sum 1 n times, again, the answer we get is n. And then um, finally, when j is not equal to k, then we can use a, another trig identity and show that that's equal to 1 half times the sum of cosine omega j plus omega k ti plus, and this is all in the sum, cosine of omega j minus omega k ti. And so we just have a sum of two cosine functions. And when we sum each cosine function over the whole interval, we get zero from the first equation. So that's equal to zero. Okay, so, uh, right, so when j is equal to k, not equal to zero, the sum gives us n over 2. When j and k are both zero, the sum, sum gives us 1. And when j is not equal to k, then we get zero. And so this last solution describes the, well, this describes the orthogonality of cosine functions of different periods. That is, you can imagine cosine, this cosine function being a vector, uh, being, ha being a vector having n, not t, n, values in it. And this cosine function uh, at the kth harmonic also being a vector. And what we're doing is simply a dot product between these two vectors. And if we take a dot product between two vectors and we get zero, that means that the two vectors are orthogonal to each other. So a cosine, two cosine functions that have different frequencies are ortho orthogonal to each other only when we have two cosine functions of the same frequencies and multiply and sum, or take the dot product of those two vectors, do we get something non-zero. Another relationship we should consider is the sum, again, over our whole record of the product of a sine function with a cosine function. And it turns out, so we can write, we can describe that using a trig identity, which turns out to be sine omega j plus omega k ti plus sine omega j minus omega k ti. And so this turns into a sum of two sine functions, where if we sum it over the whole record, we again, we get zero. And this is true whether uh, j and k are equal to each other or not, uh, or whether j is equal to, j and k are equal to zero. So in other words, sine and cosine functions are always orthogonal functions.
This describes the orthogonality of sine and cosine functions. And the last relationship is the sum of uh, two sine functions. And that's equal to n over 2 when j is equal to k when they're when we're looking at the product of two functions with the same period and it's equal to 0 when j is not equal to k and this describes the orthogonality relationship of two sine functions with different periods So these are some very key properties that we are that you'll need to understand in general and that will come up in the following discussion of discrete Fourier series.